Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, uh, Terence discuss a pretty interesting topic, and that's polar coordinates, and uh, take a look at a brief introduction on the polar coordinate system. And in fact, it's one of my favorite math topics. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty interesting. So let's look at this polar coordinates. A coordinate system represents a plane in no, a point in the plane by an ordered pair of numbers called coordinates. And I'll explain this in a bit. Usually we use Cartesian coordinates. This is just our regular x, y, which are direct distances from two perpendicular axes. In other words, uh, they form a right angle. They have 90 degrees like that. So basically, in other words, in Cartesian, uh, the coordinate system is like this. So here's a plane. There's a flat plane. This is a, the y axis, the x axis and a point on it is an ordered pair of numbers. So let's say a point on this plane here is the ordered pair is x, y. These are the coordinates of this point right here. And if you look at this point, uh, this is a basically directed distance, a perpendicular uh, yeah, basically from two perpendicular axes. In other words, the distance from here to here this is going to be a right angle like that. This distance is y. That's this uh, vertical one. And then a distance from here all the way to here, this distance is x, like that, that full distance. In other words, at this point right here, we have x. And here we have y. And that's our point x, y. And this is another perpendicular line. So that's the regular Cartesian uh, coordinate system that we've been uh, more accustomed to. But now in this video, what we're going to look at is, well, we're going to describe a coordinate system. This was in, uh, introduced by Isaac Newton. It's called the polar coordinate system, which is more convenient for many purposes, so, such as circular uh, curves, etc. And uh, this one's more for like box-like curves uh, and points. So let's uh, look at this. So basically, the definition of how we go about it is we choose a point in the plane that is called the pole or origin, and it's labeled uh, O, capital O like that. So let's draw it here. So let's say we have a point here. We'll call this O. And then we draw a, a ray, or just a half line, starting at O, called the polar axis. And this axis usually uh, is usually drawn horizontally to the right and corresponds to the positive x-axis and Cartesian coordinates. In other words, it's pretty much a, it, it represents or corresponds to this x uh, axis on the right. So we would draw a horizontal axis like this. This is we'll call that x, and this is our polar axis, like that. So it's a polar axis. Now, if p is any other point in the plane, yeah. So p just in, in any point. Let's say we have a point right here. So we'll call this p. Then let r be the distance from O to P. So in other words, from here to here is R. So let's draw this like that. This distance is R. And next what we do is we let theta be the angle, and it's usually measured in radians, between the polar axis and the line OP. So now this is right here, theta, like that. So that's theta. Yeah, and this line OP is just from here to here, O and P. Then the point P is represented by the order pair R and theta. So in other words, this, this coordinate right here at P is R and then theta, as opposed to X, Y. So now we have R, theta. So basically, the distance from the origin right here all the way to here is R. And then the angle formed around this horizontal polar axis is usually to the right uh, of the origin like that. Yeah, and basically R, R and theta are called polar coordinates of P. So yeah, that's the polar coordinates. And we use the convention that the angle is positive if measured in the counterclockwise. This is for convention, this is usually what it's used. And we'll use that in my other videos as well. So counterclockwise is positive, and the other way is negative. Uh, direction from the polar axis and negative in the clockwise direction. So in other words, clockwise would be like this. That will be a negative angle. And also, uh, by convention, if p is uh, equal to o or at o, so if this point is at the origin, if this is p, then basically we agree that 
uh, 0 theta represents the pole for any value of theta. Because if the radius or r is 0, it's at the, at the pole. It doesn't matter how many times you spin around uh, the origin, you're still at the origin. So you can spin around unlimited times, you're still at the origin. So that is what we agree that the uh, origin is, if p is uh, equal to o, like that. And now we can also extend the meaning of polar coordinates r and theta to the case where uh, to the case which r is negative by agreeing that as in the figure above, so as in this figure right right above, the points uh, negative r theta and r theta lie on the same line through uh, the origin o and at the same distance r or absolute value of r from o, but on opposite sides of O. So in other words, if it's negative, if we have R theta like this, and the negative R theta would be exactly across here on the same line through. So in other words, if we were to draw this out, yes, yeah, so if we draw this out, let's say we have the point P here, and this is the origin O. We'll move it around here. So that's the origin O. We have a line across like that, and the axis, uh, the polar axis X like this. This is our theta. And this is r. So if that's r and theta, I'll move this here. Then basically, if we were to look at this is the point r theta, so the negative version of it would be on this line by convention, all the way across, and it's the exact same distance, r like that. So this is the absolute value of r there, and that's at this point here. And then this point like this is our point negative r theta, like that. And here I quickly remove that p symbol just to show you the contrast. So r theta, this goes to negative r theta, like that. And then this total distance is, well, absolute value of r. You can consider it as a negative r as well if you put it like that. And also what we can gather from this is that this distance, since this is on the same line, this right here is, well, that's just pi degrees or 180, I mean the pi radians or 180 degrees. So 180 degrees equals to pi radians like that. Yeah, and here I quickly just remove that, put that over here, just so you understand this is 180 degrees, just for refresher. And now what that means is this overall angle from here all the way across to here, that's going to be theta plus pi. So this is theta plus pi. Yeah, or I'll just write it actually as pi plus theta, just a better convention like that. So now we have this. Yeah, this is another property. What we could even get further from this is just to see how it looks. If we draw a dashed line across here, and by using just the angle properties, this angle theta corresponds to this angle as well. That's theta as well. So that's it's basically a mirror reflection across this. So basically mirrored across, and that's what you have with this negative r theta. Uh, I mean, yeah, negative r and theta. Yeah, so basically if uh, r is greater than 0, the point r theta lies in the same quadrant as theta. So in this case, remember the quadrant is, you have four quadrants in each of these 90, 90 degrees sections. So 1, 2, 3, and then we have 4 here. So if this one's on this quadrant, then uh, yeah, basically, if r is positive, the point r theta lies in the same quadrant as theta. So in other words, this angle is here, it's in this theta. I mean, it's in this quadrant, then this point is on the same quadrant. But if r is less than 0, if it's negative, it lies in the quadrant on the opposite side of the pole. So if it's here, we move it over to the opposite. If, if the theta is here, the negative would be here. So yeah, so basically we just flip it around just uh, like that. And also notice that negative r theta represents the same point as r theta plus uh, pi. So this one equals 2 r or pi plus theta or theta plus pi, like that. So this is the same thing. So that's why I put this absolute value sign, because it doesn't necessarily mean negative r. You could have it positive, just depends on the angle. So that's how polar coordinates work. And yeah, that's why it just makes it a bit different from the uh, basic Cartesian coordinates. So yeah, a lot of it is dependent on this angle. So yeah, that's pretty uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Hopefully you followed through. I'll go over some examples in later videos to make this more, um, it is just more clear 
as well as showing you some absolutely amazing curves you can draw, especially circular curves and smooth curves. It's pretty amazing. Anyways, all for today. I hope you learned, and uh, yeah, you can download these exact notes and link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.